It all depends on the locate and traffic patterns, but it is probably easiest to core off the back of the truck. With the assistance of another crew member, carefully position the truck over the area to be cored. Turn on the safety beacon, chalk the wheels, and demarcate the area with traffic safety cones. In the cab, with the engine running and the transmission in park or neutral, turn on the beacon switches and the hydraulic power and the power takeoff or PTO number one. The PTO provides the coring unit with the hydraulic power for the coring operation. Then activate the PTO with buttons two and three located on the dash. Engage the cruise control and increase the engine speed to 1300 RPMs. Unlatch the coring boom and connect up the yellow rotary cutter control pendant. Toggle switches on this multifunction pendant allow you to turn on the power, deploy the driver's side and passenger side rear stabilizers, swing the coring boom around in a full 270 degree arc and elevate the coring mast to the upright position. This is a key tool, so make sure that when you put it down, you choose a safe place where it will not be damaged by moving equipment or run over by the truck. At this point, it is a good idea using road marking paint to paint a reference mark on the pavement at the location of the proposed cut. We like to use a T-shaped reference mark that will overlap the cut edge or kerf of the core so that when we are ready to put the core or coupon of pavement back into the road surface, we can orient it in the same relative position as it was when we took it out. Kerf is the technical term used to describe the width of the saw cut or gap between the core and the remaining pavement. Using the pendant, rotate the boom clockwise around the truck to the approximate coring position. Before moving the boom, a quick check will make sure that there are no hoses hanging down or other equipment that may have shifted during transport that could interfere with the travel of the boom. Also, check to ensure that there is nothing on the passenger side of the truck, like trees or poles or people, that could be hit by the boom as it travels around the truck. Once the boom is over the area to be cored, and before you elevate the mast and lower the coring drum, this would be a good time to again check out both the cutting teeth on the drum and the condition of the bicone pilot bit that cuts a 2 and 3 8 inch hole through the center of the core. This central pilot bit is a unique feature of the Utilicore process. Because it protrudes a little below the cutting edge of the drum, it helps to guide the coring drum into the pavement and helps to accurately seat the drum in the proper location. This is the same way that the center bit of a typical hole saw helps to center the cutting operation of the saw. The resulting pilot hole is also important as it is a key element of the procedure for removing the core from the pavement using the core puller and in manipulating the core during reinstatement. But more about the pilot hole later. While you are elevating the mast, it is always a good idea to look up to ensure that there are no overhead wires or other obstructions to interfere with it. If there are, you will have to reposition the truck and begin again. Once the mast has been elevated to the upright or vertical position, you need to make sure that it is perpendicular to the horizon in both directions and not the surface of the pavement. Because your location can sometimes be on a slight incline, or because most rows are crowned and slant down from the center line to the shoulder to allow surface water to run off, you need to make sure that the coring mast and drum are at right angles in relation to the horizon, not the surface of the pavement. To help you position the mast vertically, you can sometimes use the vertical edge of adjacent buildings as a reference point, or use a bubble level. It is equally important to get the horizontal angle of the coring unit parallel or level with the horizon. To do this, you will need to deploy and adjust the rear stabilizers, which will alternately raise the passenger side and the driver's side of the coring deck to bring it and the angle of the cutting edge of the coring drum in line with the horizon as well. In addition to setting the proper coring angle, the rear stabilizers also allow you to transfer the weight of the unit from the springs to the road surface thereby focusing all of the coring pressure downward into the road and increasing the stability and accuracy of the coring process by removing the spring action of the vehicle. With experience, most operators can eyeball the correct positioning. 100% accuracy is not mission critical, but the closer the coring angle is perpendicular to the horizon, the smaller the chance that the drum will bind up or the core becomes stuck within the drum. When the mast is perpendicular to the horizon in both planes, you are ready to begin coring.